He was sick in bed. They said, Jesus, please come and heal him. Oh, but Jesus waited until he was dead. They said, Lord, we don't understand it. Why you waited until now to come? Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Then let him go. He went on walking right out of that old tomb. Oh, yes, he did. your hands towards heaven this morning and thank God and welcome the presence of God in this building and ask God to speak to our hearts and our lives and to minister to us this morning by the power of God. You're hurting, God wants to touch you. If you need direction, He wants to give you direction this morning. If you need saving, He'll want to save this morning by the power of God. Come on, reach out to Him this morning. He's in our midst. He's in our midst this morning.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. I believe we can give a God a better praise than that. Give him a solid rock praise. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise. Hallelujah. He's a mighty good God this morning. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. We thank you for being with us this morning. And I could go home right now and say I've been in the presence of the Lord. It's been good already. Hallelujah. We thank you for being with us this morning. And Amen. Worshiping the Lord in spirit and truth. God's a good God. Amen. Amen. I want to say amen. 
we got some visitors with us for the first time, Brother Mark and Sister Angie Adams. You may came with Brother Barney and Sister Doris. Give them in the Lord a good hand this morning. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Amen. Hallelujah. He's a mighty good God. Amen. Greatly to be praised this morning. Lord, send the rain. God, send the fire. Every time I sing that song, he sang it. I remember Brother Jack Cole talking that he went to that tent revival. He said two little women sat in front of him. One said, Lord, send the fire. The other said, Lord, send the rain. Lord, send the fire. The other said, Lord, send the rain. He looked at him and said, which one do you want? One of them jumped on, hollered both of them. God, give us both of them this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Give us both of them, God. Amen. He's a mighty good God. Amen. Thank the Lord this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Brothers, Jason's going to get ready to come and receive our tithes and our offerings this morning. We thank you again for your faithfulness, your giving. Amen. Your support. The doors are open because of you. The lights are on because of you. As God has blessed you. Amen. Nothing's, nothing's free. How many believes that? If you get a phone call and say it's free, tell them no, thank you. Because it will cost you. Hallelujah. But God is good. Lord, he's a mighty good God this morning. Amen. Brother Jason. Morning, amen. It's good to know Jesus. We can never outgive the Lord. We can never outgive the Lord. And as Pastor said, thank you for being faithful. Uh, in your giving, Amen. I'm, I'm glad. I'm proud to be part of this church, Amen. And 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 therefore, all the all the fruits and blessings I receive from it, it's an honor to be able to give back to it, Amen. It's ours, and uh, God gave put you here, Amen. Not only to be a receiver, but a giver. And uh, I just thank 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 you for being faithful in that, Amen. And uh, the Bible say, without faith, it's impossible to please God, Amen. So. I uh, want to encourage you in giving this morning. The Bible, I'll real quickly, in chapter 9, 2 Corinthians, the Bible said, Every man according to his, as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And I love this. This is a promise we have in him. It says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having, always, brother says, having, it says, always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Amen. He promised. Amen. He, he promised. Give and it shall be given unto you. Last message I preached here. Amen. That uh, I got to be a help that night. I preached. Amen. In order to, to get, you've got to give. And amen. I believe that with all my heart. If the offering takes her to come, we'll get ready to receive the offering. Let's ask the Lord's blessings upon this and all the givers and all the needs. Amen. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that this may go to meet every need in the house of God. Father, we thank you and we ask you to bless, Lord, those with a heart to give this morning, Father God. We ask you to multiply it just as you did the fish and the loaves. Thank you for this beautiful facility, Lord. Thank you for everything you've given us, Father. We ask you to just go bless the needs. In Jesus' name, amen. face before that's what I'm calling on you Lord and I know it's been a while but Lord hear my prayer and I need you like I never have before sometimes it takes a while Sometimes the trouble seems. Sometimes it takes a desert to get a hold of me.
takes a desert just to get a hold of me. And your love is so much stronger than whatever troubles me. Sometimes it takes a Trust you and believe. Oh, sing that chorus again. And sometimes it takes a mountain. Sometimes it troubles me. Hallelujah. Sometimes it takes a desert just to get a hold of me.
church maybe going to be a little different, amen, because I believe God's really wanting to have his way in the house of God. Sometimes so many churches are coming together and they're just going through the rituals and the formalities, but I believe it's time to let the Spirit of God move. How many believe that? And let God just do what God wants to do, amen, hallelujah. There's always order in the house of God, but I believe the Spirit of God wants to do great and mighty things, amen. He's an awesome God this morning. that want to go to Sunday school in Brother Michael's class this morning. They're going to go upstairs there. And we've got them six foot apart. Everything's fixed. So, amen. If you, if you belong with Brother Michael this morning, you can go upstairs and, and, and go with him this morning by the grace of God, okay? And then Sister Audrey's going into Brother Michael's room. If you, or, okay, let him finish up. Yeah, okay. The other's fixed up just in a few days, amen. But God's a mighty good God. Amen. Give God another shout of praise this morning. Amen. I want to talk to you a few minutes this morning, preach to you, and teach to you the things that the Lord has really dealt with me upon and uh, for a week or so in this. And uh, I put a lot of time in on this because there's so much on it, and really it needs to be a series, but I won't, I won't just go into the highlights this morning. And... Uh, a uh, s- s- couple of y'all in here have had a little problems with this. Um, how many knows when you have a heart problem, a natural heart problem, it affects the whole body? It does. And when you have a spiritual heart problem, it affects every aspect in your spiritual life. It does. And we're going to talk about the heart this morning, more than just the organ of the body and the and the pumper of the blood and and those things. And... Uh, and I, uh, one day I was at the doctor's office and uh, I got his little I wanted to hear what my heart sounded like. That's amazing to hear that blood go. Is that way it sounds, Jim? On that well, that's the way mine sounded. <laughs> Wanna make sure I was normal. <laughs> you hear that blood? And uh, uh, and he played up on the side of my neck, too. And I said, what's that for? He said, I want to see if blood's getting all the way up there. And you hear that blood? Just, you hear that? that was amazing. And do what now? Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Randall. <laughs> and uh, uh, so all these things are important to us. And I want to preach about the heart this morning. And uh, the habitat, the habit, uh, that they put on tombstones and different things I say about people. Uh, this is one that Jen always loved this with Jennifer Brock. She always was into that with when I tell her what I wanted. And uh, Psalms, or let's go to uh, Acts chapter 13 this morning, verse 22 for just a moment. We'll start there. And it's also in the book of 1 Samuel. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 13, Saul had been rejected for being king of Israel, and God told him, God told Samuel to quit mourning over Saul. It was over, and to go find me a new king. And he said, "I've got a man after my own heart." God said this to Samuel, and in, Amen. Then it's been recorded again in, in in Acts here. And when he had removed him, that was that was Saul. He raised up unto them David to be their king, whom also he gave a testimony. Now, God gave this testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Now, I want to just leave it there for just a moment this morning. When your heart, everybody say heart this morning. Amen. And uh, every one of us has had our hearts in different ways and 
Amen. And, but when the Bible talks about the heart, it primarily is referring to the ruling center of the whole person. It's the spring of desires. The heart is not only a spiritual activity, but of all the operations of the human life. Heart and soul are often used interchangeable according to Deuteronomy chapter number 6. So when we look at this this morning, we're in an hour that everything is trying to turn people's hearts away from God. Everything you might not see is going away from God. The Bible says in the end days as it was in the days of Noah, amen, as it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, as it was in the days of Lot, it shall be. And the Bible talks about that men's hearts were continually evil. Everything they did, there was an evil thought with it. It was something, amen, that wasn't right. It wasn't a God thing. Amen. So when you look at this this morning, and many of you have, you know, you, uh, you, 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 you've had uh, maybe a, a heart cath or, or something, and, and you checked yourself out, and amen, and they come back and told you everything was great, or maybe you had a small blockage or ever what it was, and amen. But you always love to hear that good news. Man, you got the heart of a 25-year-old. Well, guess what? I got a heart this morning of 25 years old. Some of y'all saying, no, I don't know about that. Amen. amen. But how many knows that God is good this morning? I, amen. I have what I speak. I speak what I have. But God is good. Amen. I speak that word over me every morning. I'm healed by the blood of Jesus. Your word is health to all my flesh. And I put from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Amen. Everything about me. Amen. God is good. I'd rather do that than complain. Oh, God, I'm hurting. I'm not knocking anybody that does that. I'd just rather do the other. Somebody say amen. So amen. God is saying amen this morning, amen, about David, that he found a man after his own heart. Amen. And, you know, I, I want God to be able to say that about me. How many of y'all want God to say that about you? That you are a person after his desires. That you want the will of God in your life. See, this heart is, is your desires, your emotion, amen, to fulfill the will of God. And I don't believe there's a person here this morning that don't want the will of God in your life. You wouldn't be here if you, if you didn't want the will of God in your life. And see, and sometimes, how many of you feel like, you know, you're not doing anything for the Lord? Amen. You feel like I'm just, I'm just there. But if you've got a heart for God this morning, amen, just calling somebody sometime or saying something to somebody or smiling at them or, amen, or just being friend to them, amen, can make all the difference in the world of that person. Amen. So this morning, uh, uh, I, I want to be a man after God's own heart, not just when I need something and, and uh, boy, do I need things. Amen. But God's a good God. And the Bible talks about the heart. And you that write down this, amen, that you that write, amen, or take notes, amen. Over 946 times, the Bible talks about the heart. 946 times, the Bible talks about the heart. Something about the heart. There's over 50 types of hearts, or the Bible calls them, gives them names in the Bible. Over 50 types of hearts that people have. Let me just give you just a small example, and then we'll go into some of them later. Uh, there's a stony heart. There's a divided heart. There's a deceitful heart. Uh, there's a, 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 a upright heart. There's a tender heart. There's a pure heart. There's a clean heart. There's an honest heart. There's a heavy heart. So see, when the Bible talks about these, God knows everything about you and I this morning. Amen. And uh, I want to sh share some things with you this morning. So we're living in an hour, amen, that our heart, amen, and trouble comes our way. And when trouble comes away, a lot of times it reveals things in our heart that we didn't realize. I had a friend of mine that, amen, some, some troubles happened to his life. He had always had a pretty good life. Everything was pretty well together. And he looked at him and said, man, that guy's blessed. You know, his life is all together. And, and, and one day some things began to happen in his life. And things began to fall apart. And some tragedies came by. And he said, you know what? He said, anger began to come out of me that I didn't know I had in there. He said, I felt resentful to God. And he said, I had to talk to God and tell God, hey, God, this isn't right in my life. Amen. See, everything, God don't only know the past and, and the present. God knows the future. And God knows how to uh, convey and, and to maneuver, amen, and make a way for you when there is no way. 
It don't mean there won't be troubles in that way, but he knows how to guide your steps. He knows how to steady your steps in those slippery places. Amen? So when you look at this this morning, see, God not only knows your present, God knows your future. And, God, and if you'll walk in the will of God, now that don't mean there will not be hurts and trials and disappointments and, amen, and, and, and things in your life that wants to destroy you, but God wants to bring out the God in you. How many believes that this morning? Amen. So if you'll go with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 118. I've got a lot of places to go this morning. But Psalms, chapter 118. And this is what I want to talk about for just a few minutes this morning. And, you know, and sometimes we fail. Sometimes we, we make mistakes. Sometimes, you know, uh, we get hurt. We get hurt at people or just ever what it can be. And, and sometimes, you know, there's things that sort of build up in our lives. One day uh, I, I was doing something somewhere, I don't even know where I got it at, but I got a little old briar, a little old briar in, in, in my arm. And I didn't know I even had it in there until it began to fester a little bit. And I didn't know, and I, I, I had the window down, and I started to put my arm up on the door uh, where the window goes up. And all of a sudden I felt, and I thought, what in the world? And I felt back there, and I felt a little knot. It was a, a little old briar that began to fester up in there. Now, what I had to do was I fooled around until I got that little old briar out. Then I didn't have to worry about it festering anymore. See, there was a time in your life, sometimes you get little briars, little thorns in there. And they'll fester. Amen. And that's a good thing because it lets you know and it's fighting for you. Amen, Brother Wayne. Amen. Bible says in Psalms 108 in verse number 1, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endures forever. 1-8. I thought I was reading the wrong scripture, but I thought I was. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. This was a song, a psalm of David, and uh, and he, he was being persecuted here. He's, he was really going through a hard time in the wilderness there. Amen. But the Bible says this, God, oh God, my heart is fixed. How many of y'all like to have a fixed heart this morning? <laughs> now, when them doctors take your heart out and they'll fix it and they'll massage it and they'll, amen, put veins in there and what all they do and, amen, they, and they'll put it back in your body and get you all going again, they fixed your heart. So David is saying here, God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory or my strength. How many wants a fixed heart this morning, regardless of what comes, that your heart is fixed to God? And when your heart is fixed to God, somehow you'll say, bless the Lord. I don't like where I'm at. I don't like the trouble I'm in. I don't like the hurt. I don't like the pain. But blessed be God. Amen. He's still working it out for my good. How many believe that God will work all things out for your good this morning? It, you may not understand it. You may not consider it. And how can God, through pain and anguish and agony, bring something good? How can a woman give birth to a child of such pain and anguish, anguish and agony? Amen. Bring forth such a beautiful little child. Amen. It's a God thing. Amen. And I don't mean that we, amen, don't suffer or have troubles, but amen. David said, my heart is fixed. And in the Hebrew, this word fixed this morning, it means to be confident. My heart is confident in God. Amen. My heart is steadfast in God. Amen. And my heart is faithful to God. Uh, amen. With all that is within me. And the opposite of being unfixed uh, is undecisive or halting. It's not made up. You're teeter tottering. Uh, it's back and forth. But David says one thing about it God, my heart is fixed, and I'm going to sing and praise to you because you are worthy this morning. How many knows that God is worthy to bless the Lord this morning? How many knows that God is worthy for us to give him some praise this morning? Amen. Now, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. We're in a sinful world. We're in a world that is broken and has fallen. Amen. And there's things that are not, that nothing is perfect in this world. And things will go wrong. Disappointments to the best. 
David, a man after God's own heart, fell God. But his desire was, amen, to do the will of God. You may have fallen in here this morning. You may not be where you need to be with God. But if you've got a heart still saying, God, I want to get up. I want to try. I want to repent. I want to change. You are one blessed person this morning. How many believes that? It's the person that says, I give up, I throw in the towel, I walk away, it ain't worth it. Amen. That's the person that's got a heart that's in trouble. So I want my heart this morning, and I want to be as David. My heart is fixed. My heart is steadfast. My heart is confident that God is God this morning. Can I get a witness in this house? Amen. The heart this morning. Amen. It, 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 it is a magnificent thing. It, as I said a while ago, it, it, it's the ruling center of the whole person. Every what a man thinks in his heart, he's going to speak out of his mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, there ain't a part of person in here that ain't said this. Somebody, you said something to somebody, and you said, oh, I'm just kidding, but you really wasn't. I got you, didn't I? You, you know, you tried to blow it off. Oh, I'm just teasing. But down in your heart, you really meant it. That mouth will reveal you. <laughs> Uh-oh. How many of y'all got a mouth? How many is it? It talks quite a bit. Amen. Sometimes I've got to get both feet out. I don't just get a foot out. I get both feet out. Amen. Y'all ever been there? Amen. So what God is saying to us this morning, amen, and, and through the psalm of David is, I want my heart fixed. I want a decisive heart that I made my mind up. The journey may be long. The battles may be rough, but I got my mind made up. I'm not looking back. I'm not turning around. I, amen. It may not be good today, but God's still God today. He'll be God tomorrow. He'll be God next week. And when I'm still on the mountaintop, I can still say he's God of the mountain and of God of the valley. Amen. So we're living in an hour right now that you've really got to make your mind up because we're living in an evil time, a time of great deceptions. I've never seen so many prophecy preachers out there, everybody prophesying something. You better know what you listen to. Amen. You better make sure the Bible, amen. If you've got a good pastor, you better listen to him and forget some of that nonsense. Now, there's a few out there that's okay, but everything is saying, Lord, Lord, is not, amen, ain't got it. Amen. And the most of them, amen, hallelujah. Uh, like one guy said to, one, uh, said to me one time, he said, I know when the Lord is coming. And I said, well, I don't know about that. He said, I can prove it by the Bible on when the Lord's coming. He said, in the hour and in the day you think not, he's going to come. So when you don't think about it, he's coming. He was right. He knows when he's coming, when you don't think about it, or when the hour and the day that, amen. And look, if you ever looked at a day that we're living in, not many people believe that even goes to church that the Lord's coming back. If they are, they sure ain't living like it. Amen. You see them packing out a Kroger or a 12-pack? You see them doing things they ain't supposed to be doing? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, God's still good. So the heart, amen, is both physical and it's a spiritual, amen, amen. It represents the central wisdom, amen, of our feelings and, as, as opposed to, amen, just the head wisdom. You know, I've got some head knowledge, but I'm going to tell you, right here's where I have a problem. Amen, Brother Wayne. So David said, my heart is fixed. And he goes over in the book of Psalms, chapter 57, I believe if I'm correct, and verse number 7. And David again confirms this thing about being steadfast. How many of you got to have your mind made up right now? Brother, you got to have your mind made up. Amen. It ain't no looking back. Amen. If you, if you start looking back, you're going to be like Lot's wife. You ain't going to make it. Amen. And that's a powerful scripture there in the book of Luke when, when the Lord just said that one thing. One little verse said, remember Lot's wife. That's a powerful thing. Remember Lot's wife. Remember. I remember one time at Rowena, amen, I, 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 God gave me a message, and amen, and that's all he gave me, remember Lot's wife. And I thought, Lord, what am I going to do with remember Lot's wife? And a preacher and his wife were camping down at Kendall, and they came to church that night, and they were thinking about quitting the ministry and walking away from God. 
And I see them sitting there in that service night, like crying. I thought, well, you know, whatever. What, what's going on with them? They came up to me after church and said, Pastor, said you don't know you don't know a thing about us. But we were decided, amen, we had took this little camping trip and we had done made our minds up that we were going to leave and walk away from the ministry and everything else. And God talked to us tonight. Remember lots why. You can't look back in this journey. You can't look back in this journey. This journey is not to look back. Amen. Everything we got ahead of us. Now, my natural life, I look back and see all the things. But amen, only thing I have is what's before me. Amen. As the saying is, amen, everything in my past is in the tomb. Amen. And everything before me is in the womb. It, it's still got to be revealed. Amen. So God is saying to us this morning, my heart is fixed, oh God. I, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. David is saying something this morning is, amen, we got to praise him. How many knows that that brings the presence of God? Give him glory. God, I don't know. In this situation, God, I know that I can change and be a better person. Every time I get into a storm, I do this more than that, but when I get in a storm, I really say, God, I know sometimes it takes a mountain. Now, I don't want y'all to misunderstand me. Sometimes I love that song. And sometimes that song gets on my nerves so bad I could, I tell Gene, hush, hush, I don't hear it. Don't hear it. Well, that went over pretty good. I, 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 some, I said, I don't hear that. That's the last thing I want to hear right now is another mountain or another valley or another desert. Is anybody with, be honest now. She starts singing that, and I feel like getting depressed. I don't want to be depressed. God, have mercy. And other times, she can sing that song, and he gives me strength, and he gives me courage, and it lifts me up. Well, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. That's the way it is. But when I get into a place that I'm hurting sometimes, I just humble my heart or, and I say, God, I, 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 I just got to have this. God, I, I want to be a man. God, that's got a heart. God, I want the heart of you and the heart for you. God, I want a heart that, God, no matter what comes or goes, that I'm keep going on. I may have to stop and wipe the tears, but I'm going to go on. God, I may have to stop and just... Shake myself a little bit. But God, I got my mind made up. My heart's fixed. See, that's what you got to do. Amen. Because we got a lot of people in this hour turning back. Amen. I, amen. You cannot believe in the last six months how many preachers has called me and said, Preacher, how many people have you lost in this pandemic? Amen. Some people have lost over half of their congregation. Amen. They, they just didn't, ain't staying home because they're afraid of a virus. They have backslidden. They, they went after other things in the last six months. They've got cold and bitter in the last six months. Amen. Amen. And he said some, amen. They, he said they're not going to come back. He said they're doing things that he said it's unreal. But listen, anytime that you're in a crisis, it's a time to seek God. Anytime that you've got a problem, it's a time to seek God. Anytime you've got a, uh, uh, so, amen, God's good, amen. Even when we failed him and we've let him down and we walked away, he said, I'm standing right here. I'm ready to bring you back back. Amen. And I want I want this, to, that my heart is fixed. And Amen. And, and it doesn't mean that, amen, that I didn't hurt when Sister Jean got hurt. And amen, and that I, I amen, that, I, I, amen, you know, I, I, I said, oh, God, not again. Amen. You know what, that, Brother Brian, have you said that? <laughs> oh, yeah. But your heart's fixed this morning. Heart's fixed. That makes all the difference. Amen. Let me tell you something. According to Scripture, according to Scripture, something can steal your heart. 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 6, something can steal your heart. Your heart can be stolen. From the things that you love. Absalom stole the hearts of the people from David. He stole their hearts that they was willing to risk their lives for Absalom in a rebellion against David the king. He stole their hearts. So your heart can be stolen. 
You, amen. And that's why the book of Proverbs, Daniel, go to Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. Amen. The Bible said, guard your heart or keep a watchman at your heart. You've got to put a guard up here because if you don't, something will get in and take it away. I wish y'all hear me this morning. There's things that can steal your heart. Amen. Amen. People that used to love God and go to the house of God and raise their hands and dance and shout and praise God. And there ain't no better life than that. Let me tell you, the honky tonk stole it from us. Amen. We are the praisers. We are the dancers. We are the shouters. We are the singers. We are those. Amen. That's what we are. Amen. And I know some of y'all, maybe not a lot of outward showing, but sometimes you get whoop. That's right, Joey. I got you there. Somebody, somebody shout amen. He's sort of a quiet guy. I am too, you know, but anyhow. Somebody shout hallelujah. God is good. Keep thine heart with all diligence. For out of it, look at this, for out of it are the issues of life. Amen. Everything comes out that's life comes out of your heart. And it gives somebody else. How many ever give somebody something and you had joy with it? I mean, he just tickled you to death to give that to them. You ever give something and didn't want to give it? And how, and how joy in it did it? Now, how joy in it? Now, if I give you anything, it's going to be because I want to give it, and I enjoy giving it. Amen. God's good. Let me tell you, he's good. Look at this. Guard your hearts. Everybody shout, guard my heart. Guard it. Amen. Because everything is in here is the seat of life. Right here is the seat of everything I got. Not just my blood pumper, but my, the center of my being. My heart that God has re given new life to. Resurrected. Amen. Next verse, Daniel. Look at this. In 20, verse 24. Put away from thee a forward mouth. Be careful with your mouth. Be careful what we say. Brother Shambach used to preach some message. Amen. Watch your words and make them chocolate chip because somewhere you might have to eat them. <laughs> Put away from thee a forward mouth and a perverse lip far from thee. Amen. Watch what you say. Amen. If you can't say nothing good about somebody, just park it. Amen. You know that story with a little, amen, here's a woman that thought good of everybody. Amen. She was in church and ever, she had something good to say about everybody. She could say something good about Brother Calvin. She could say something good about Sister uh, what, Dorinda. Amen. And she could say something good about Brother Buddy and, and, and everybody. And they said, we're going to get her. We're going to find out that she ain't like that. And they said, well, what do you think about the devil? She said, he does his job well. Somebody shout amen. So we need to watch what we say. Amen. Because out of our mouth are life and death. Amen. And it comes from the heart. Somebody shout amen again. Amen. I want to be one. Amen. I don't want to be undecisive. Amen. How many of y'all would like to just stop right now and say, God, I want a heart get fixed. I want my heart fixed, God. God, I want a heart fixed. I don't want this teeter-totter. I don't want this up and down stuff. I want my mind made up, my spirit made up. God, I want my heart fixed. That I'm going to praise you. I'm going to give you glory. And with all that is within me to love the Lord. Amen. God is good. Amen. That's why David said in Psalms 139 and verse 23, just stay right there, Daniel. Amen. Amen. He said, search me, O God. And know if there's any offensive thing, or he called it a wicked thing, but that word wicked means offensive. Anything that would offend you, God, cleanse me from it. I ask God all the time, God, walk the corridors of my heart. God, walk the, the dark places. God, search the places that I don't know about. And God, change me and help me in there, God. Because, God, i got to have it in this hour. Folks, you're going to have to have it in this hour. Hey, man, you're going to have to have it. How many believe you're going to have to have it? Because you're going to face something, hey, man, that you've got to make your mind up. Either I turn back or I'm going on. And I see a lot of God's people that even still goes to church across this country. They've sort of been killed 
and they go through the motions and they go through the rituals of it, but there's no life in it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Somebody shout, God is good. Amen. Because we may not know ever and understand every twist and turn in our lives, but we know that God's in control of them. Can I get a witness in the house? Amen. Hallelujah. Look, listen to what Proverbs 4.24 says. Put away, next verse, Daniel. Amen. 25 now. Let thine eyes look right on. And let thine eyelids look straight before thee. That means keep your focus before you. Because if you start looking around, oh, God, look at him. God, look at her. Oh, God, look at what I'm, oh, God. Oh, God, it, I, I, you get in that faint state. You get in that state that, God, I, 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 of uncertainty. How many, how many of y'all been there? But you got to look to him, the author and the finisher of our faith. Because, amen, I can't look to the side. Amen. I can't look when trouble comes and look at trouble all the time. I've got to keep my eyes on him. Amen. And if we don't do that, we start getting this, well, well. Anytime that somebody's talking to me, they start that well and button, I know that we're headed in the wrong direction. I've had people come and say, Brother Wayne, I think you're the greatest preacher alive. I think that you, you're, you're wonderful. I'll bless you. Amen. But, and I know right then, we're going south fast. Somebody shout amen. <laughs> well, if I'm that good, forget the other stuff. That's like Sister Jean. She told me that time, amen, many years ago, if she ever married somebody, she'd like to marry somebody like me. Why would you want to marry somebody like this when you've got this? I won. It took a lot of doing, oh, let me tell you one thing. Somebody, watch it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. I was persistent. She was too. Hallelujah, but God is good. How many of that God is good? Amen. In Mark chapter 7, amen, I'll go there just a minute. Let me finish this up. Next verse, Dan, okay, buddy? Look at this. Ponder the path of thy feet. Now look at this. Watch this. Ponder means to think. Think on it. Meditate upon it. Wait a minute. This decision that I'm making, where will it take me? Where will it take me? Will it draw me closer to God? Or will it turn me away from God? Ponder the path of your feet. Where's your feet taking you? Not just your natural feet, but your Heart feet. Am I right now? Let all thy ways be established. Don't, don't, get, don't turn out of the way. You start this straight and narrow. Still straight and narrow, folks. Amen. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left and remove thy foot from evil. Listen, amen. If I get around somebody and they start this gossiping, talking, and speaking evil, amen, you're going to find me... I ain't going to stay around that stuff because if you're not careful, they'll have you shaking your head for long and, and then when you leave, you feel like you fell in a mud hole. Huh? Amen. Is there one more verse? Is that it? I think there's another. One more verse. It ain't it? Okay. Now what God is saying is guard your heart because if you don't guard your heart, you're going to do these things right here. How many of y'all got your mind made up this morning? Amen? Amen. Mark, uh, Mark chapter 7 and verse 6 this morning. And Isaiah 29 and 13 says the same thing. Amen. That people, amen, this people honor me with their mouth. Amen. How many of you ever had somebody talk about you? Oh, I like you, Brother Wayne. You're a great guy, Brother Calvin. And then behind you about God, have mercy. That's honoring with your lips, but your heart's not with it. If you say one thing with your mouth and then you turn around and say something opposite, amen, amen, you're divided. Amen. As he written and said unto them, well, has Isaiah the prophesied unto you hypocrites as it is written, this people honor me with their lips. I don't want to honor God with my lips. I want my heart. I want my heart in it. And test and trials and hardship sometimes. Amen. And when it comes to the point that you've got to prove what you are, 
Can, now look at this. I, I, I think about this often, and I think about me, and I look myself in the mirror sometimes. Amen. I, I know a guy one time that had a bad complex, and amen. He had some little family problems. Uh, amen. He was a young a young man, a young boy. Amen. And he went to a counselor, and that counselor made him sit before that mirror. Amen. I think for two hours a day, had to sit before that mirror and look at himself to try to get a better image of himself. Amen. It, it, it didn't work for him. Bless his heart. Amen. But here's the thing. That word is a mirror. When I look into the word of God, it'll tell me what I am. And then, amen, it says you can do something about what you are. Can I get a witness in here? I don't want my lips saying, I love you, Lord, and then my heart be out child in the world somewhere. Amen. Amen. When your heart and lips come together, then something's going to happen by the grace of God. I'm preaching this morning. We all need a heart fix. I remember when my brother David having a heart attack in Campbellsville. They called us and said he's in a, having a heart attack. And we got there, and, and it was amazing, and I know it was God. I, I just know it was God. Amen. He was in the emergency room. He was in a massive heart attack. Amen. Amen. He was struggling for breath. Amen. They had the, the doctors is in there, the nurses in there, and they let us in there. And you can see his heart. You can see him struggling, trying to get his breath. <laughs> trying to get oxygen. Him laying there, I got to hold his big toe. And I clamped onto that toe. And I said, God, I'm going to be the jumper cables between you and him. And I stood there and I prayed the whole time that he was in that heart attack. Amen. Struggling. Didn't know if he's going to live or die in them hollering. Come on now, David. Come on. Come on, buddy. Don't turn loose. Come on. And I'm going to I'm a holy, I don't know if that toes, it, uh, that toes a holy toe, boy. I'm telling you right now it is. Somebody shout amen. I got a hold of that thing and I wouldn't turn it loose until all of a sudden the blood started flowing. And it eased, and that thing began to level down and everything began to come into, into contents. And that nurse looked over and said, we've got it. Thank God for doctors. Thank God for the nurses. Thank God for the medicine. But I thank God that he was in the room. Because that made all the difference in the world. Because let me tell you something. Medicine's good, but it's God that heals. Medicine can treat symptoms. Medicine can do certain things, but it cannot heal. Only God is healer of all things this morning. Amen. I give honor to doctors. Amen. Those that don't think that they're God. Amen. I give honor and thank God for the, for, for the, the profession of nurses and, and all the medical field. But amen. God is to be glorified because he is the author of life. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, God is good. God is good. Our heart. Daniel, the book of Luke, chapter number 9, verse 57 this morning. God is good. The Bible says in Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 16, to have a circumcised heart. That means removing all the covering that your heart is open before God. Don't try to hide something from God. You can't hide from God. God knows it. God knows the intents of your thought before they get to you. The Bible talks in Deuteronomy 6 there, give me a circumcised heart. That re means remove the covering. Remove that hardness, that callousness that can be covered up. Amen, Brother Wayne. People don't understand that sometimes, but we need that thing moved off of us. Amen. God. Now sometimes, I've heard Brother Ronnie say it, I've said it, I've said it. You get what you, you know, I mean, this is what you get. You know who I am? This is what you Sister Lisa, did he tell you that before you married him? This is what you get? Well, you had no surprises after you said, I do. <laughs> Sister Jean got this? <laughs> Just don't notice. Trouble. Somebody shout amen. I wonder why in a marriage vow that they say for better or worse. Now, nobody hears it. When you get married, you don't hear that. There ain't, ain't going to be nothing be worse about that marriage. You wait till y'all start trying to blend. Hello. Does anybody know what I'm talking about out there? How many married folk we got? Now, it may be honey bear and, and graham crackers, amen, but sometimes there's a bumblebee gets in the midst of it. 
Amen. You got to kill the bumblebee. Amen. God is good. Amen. The Bible talks about, amen, the circumcised heart to remove all the covering and the secrets and the unbelief and walk in obedience. See, David was willing to obey God. David failed God. David made a, a, a tragic mistake. and David knew it. But his heart was still, I want to serve God. And David repented quickly. Somebody shout amen. David was not a perfect man. There's no man perfect. Amen. But yet he had a heart after God. The Bible says it came to pass that after they went the way in the way, this was Jesus and the disciples, a certain man. Now in the book of Matthew, it calls that man a scribe. Amen. And it calls him a scribe. Matthew 8 and verse 19. So this certain man is a scribe, and he's the one that copies the laws of God. Amen. He, he, he's a writer of, of the law. And uh, he, uh, uh, he, he, he copies the royal law and the sacred manuscripts. Amen. He's a clerk who does this. So that's what he was. He, he, he copied these laws, and, and he knew them. He knew all the laws of God, the 619 laws and, and the Ten Commandments. He knew them all, he, and he knew it. And he said this. Amen. Lord, I will. Nobody's asking him to. Nobody's out urging him to. He just gets this emotional uh, tent going. And he says, I will follow thee wheresoever thy goeth. God, I'm going to follow you anywhere you go. And Jesus said unto him, foxes have holes. Birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has not where to lay his head. Now, you willing, you willing to walk away and leave it all? Follow that? The ease, the comfort, the way you want it? Am I preaching y'all now? That's what Jesus was saying here. Amen. It, it, this ain't no comfort way sometimes. Sometimes it, 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 it's a little hard. But it's the only good way. Because you got peace in the midst of storm. You got commitment. Oh, my God. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Next verse, please. Amen. Now watch this. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and to bury my father. And, and the scripture and history says he was not dead. His father, amen, may have many, many years left. Amen. And, he, and what he was saying was, let me go home and talk it over and see what everybody says about me following you. Amen. You can't give anybody else's opinion. you got to get your mind made up. I'm going to serve God. If mama don't, if daddy don't, if brother don't, sister don't, husband don't, wife don't, if a neighbor don't, if nobody serves you, I'm going to serve you. If I get hurt, I'll get up and get the oil and the safe and get healed, but I'm going to serve you, God. You gotta have a made up mind, church. That's what I'm preaching. We're living in a world right now that spirits of hell and demon powers of hell are running rampant and causing people's minds to get wandering and think about, boy, it's better over yonder. Amen. But it's not. Hallelujah. Look at these scriptures this morning. Let me go bury my father. And somebody said, well, that, that's a reasonable request. It really wasn't because, amen, his father had not even died. He wasn't going to a funeral. It might have been years before he was, he was procrastinating, amen, of serving God and making a commitment to God. I'm preaching, folks, y'all, this morning. Amen. Everybody shout, get your mind made up. Get your mind made up. Amen. You got to get your mind made up. You got to get your heart settled. You got to get your heart fixed to the point. Amen. I established. Amen. I, this. Oh God, no matter. I, I, I keep saying it over and over. But Amen. I, I want to re reassure you. Amen. You got to have your hands on the plow. So Jean now has to ride in the back of the car if we go anywhere. She has to ride in the back seat because she can't bend her knee. They have to be stretched out at all times, so she can't bend it. Period. And uh, the other day, she was helping me drive. <laughs> she wasn't trusting mine. Somebody shout amen. How many of y'all are backseat drivers? Uh-huh. Another said, Lord. I'll follow thee, but let me go and bid them farewell at home. Let me go. Let, let me go and see. Uh, y'all think it's okay if I go with the Lord? Y'all, y'all think? What, what y'all think about what I'm getting ready to do? No, that call of God. Amen. Listen, 
I, I, I told you all that story. When Jack Cole, he was a wicked man, and his mom and daddy were very wicked people, very sinful people. Amen. They just wasn't, amen, maybe they didn't, wasn't maybe really, but they were wicked people. They were just wicked. The things they did was wicked. Amen. And they finally, Jack talked them into going to that little tent revival down there. And they went down there. Amen. And the preacher preached that night. And he preached under conviction. He preached under the power of God. And friend, we need that preaching again like that. We need that preaching that will stir your spirit and awaken you and get you to think, where am I at with God? Amen. If I put you on, uh, amen, if we had to try you to be a Christian this morning, amen, and, and bring the evidence, amen, you heard that story many times, would he even be found guilty to be a Christian? I ain't talking about a church member. I'm talking about a child of God. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. And Jack Cole's mom and daddy went to that, finally went to that table just to please Jack and get, them all, get, them, get him off of their back. Amen. They got there and that preacher preaching. He preached the conviction and the love of God, heaven high and hell hot. Amen. And he preached it. Amen. Jack's mama looked over at Papa Jack and said, uh, Papa Cohen said, Amen, let's go to the altar. He said, I ain't going. She said, get out of my way. I'm going. I'm going to tell you, if daddy don't want to go, if mama don't go, if, if children don't go, you got to have your mama. I'm going to that altar. And she went to that altar that night and got gloriously saved makes a difference how many believes that let me tell you folks being saved is the only thing there is in life take Jesus take the light take it out of your life what do you have there's a void there's an emptiness folks you need a hunger for God you need a thirst for God you need a desire you need a passion I don't don't think I gotta be like you amen but you got a passion for everyone Listen, you can't get a passion for a bass boat without wanting to buy all the trinkets that go with it. If you buy, what's that thing, side by sides, they're nice. I, I, I like to, I thought I'd like to have one. And Jason showed me some prices of them. I said, nope. Why, Lord, have mercy. I got more fun walking. I still got my $2 in my pocket. $32 or $32,000, $29,000 for a side by side. I said, I don't, I said, there ain't enough in that thing for that. Well, anyhow, now if you've got one, hallelujah, glory to God, tell me about it and I'll borrow it. I'll let you pay the payments and I'll, I'll, I'll do the riding. Somebody shout amen. But I, I, I'm just saying, amen. Now, I, I got, you're, you're a fisherman and you love to fish. You got to pay, amen, you like to fish. Nothing wrong with that, amen, amen. I got to tell you, I like to go fishing. Then how that fish go? Somebody shout Amen. You know what? I get a little more passion. I'll go buy me a rotten reel. Then I'll buy me a whole bunch of little lures. You'll sell me some. I'm t- <laughs> Thanks a lot, brother. <laughs> How about barring a few to see? <laughs> I'm <laughs> reel them. So I might change. I don't know if I want fish or not. I might not like it after I get started. See, my mind ain't made up. I could quit. If my mind's made up, you'll wade the water when it's 40 degrees, won't you? These guys will go out here deer hunting, nothing wrong with this now, and hit five below zero and climb a tree at three o'clock in the morning to sit there and don't even know if a deer will come your way or not. You got a passion. Amen. They said, why don't you deer hunt? I said, I got a passion to lay in that bed at three o'clock in the morning. Now, nothing wrong with deer hunting, so I'm not saying that. But see, amen, but I want this passion for God like that. I want that passion for God, amen, that when I don't feel like I'll get up and pray. Amen. Amen. When I don't want to, I'll still pray because I know that's my lifeline. Amen. Because somewhere down the road, amen, my children may be sick or in an accident or my home may be in jeopardy. And if I've got that lifeline, God can intercede for me and God will work for me and God will bless me. Y'all preaching with me this morning? Amen. Brother Randy, how's your life? How much has your life changed in the last year that y'all been coming? Tremendous, hasn't it? Tremendous. Amen. Because the power of God. How many of say God is good? Somebody give God a shout of praise this morning. Come on, give him a shout of praise. See, my heart is fixed this morning. Amen. Look at this. And next, uh, next verse, Daniel. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hands to the plow. You say, preacher, how come you preach that this morning? Because God gave it to me. Man, you can't put your hands on the plow. You may keep looking back. 
in a cloud like this. You'll be all over the place. And nothing will really be accomplished when you get done today. Can I get a witness? Amen. How many of you want your minds made up this morning? How many got to have your mind made up this morning? Amen. The Bible says this. Amen. With, with, with one's heart. With understanding this morning. In Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 13. A heart to serve him. To serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind, thy body, and thy strength. And Matthew 22 and 37 says to love him with all of your heart. How many of you know you've got to love him with all your heart? Amen. And to keep his word. Daniel, go to Deuteronomy 26 and 16. Listen, folks. I want to say this. Y'all see me on Sunday and you see me on Wednesday and Sunday nights. And most of the time you look at me and you think, boy, he's got it all together. Well, am I right or wrong? Boy, you know, it don't look like he has what, I mean, how, how, how's he got that and I don't have that? You do have it. Now, we're all different. But see, there's times I don't have it all together. But I'm confident that I don't sway while it's, while it's doing everything. Because I know somehow God will work it out. When I went and seen Brother Calvin, how many hours was you in surgery? 13 hours he was in surgery. He didn't have a heart for so many hours. They had his heart out working on it hours and hours and hours. And the medicine they gave him, you couldn't even get into his room for a few days or something. He, he, his medicine was so contagious that he could get on you. It was radioactive or something in it or aerosol, okay. And you couldn't you could get in there. Finally, when I went to see Brother Calvin, man, you could tell he had been through it. He was white. He had no color. I mean, you could tell he had been through major surgery. But you know what? He done what the doctor said. He knew what to do and how to do certain things. And he began, you could see him every time I'd see him. You could see an improvement in him. When I first seen him, I said, oh, man. <laughs> he was a miracle to be alive. You hear me? But he took care of that heart. And he done what that heart to sit do with that heart. And look at him now. You never know he even had surgery. So the goodness of God. Can I get a witness in here? Listen, that's the same way with your heart with God. Look down from thy holy hand habitation from heaven and bless thy people Israel and the land which thou hast given us as thou swareth unto our fathers a land that floweth with milk and honey. Next verse. I don't think that's the one I'm looking for. Somebody shout amen. Yes. This, is the, this day is the Lord thy God has commanded thee to do these statutes. Now watch this. If you obey God, it ain't always easy, but if you'll do your best to obey God and keep his commandments, you know what God's going to do? God's going to bless your heart. God's going to, how many believes that? I, when God spoke to me in 1983, I believe it was, amen, quit your job. And go full time in the ministry. I say, God, I can't do that. <coughs> no money. There's no offerings. We take an offering up and roll into church. We talking about seven, eight, ten dollars. If you got a twenty-five dollar offering, you thought the windows of heaven have been opened. That's just the truth. <laughs> Nobody giving tithes. When I started there, and God said, quit your job and go full time in the ministry. I went to God and I said, God, I've got two little girls and I got a wife and we got to live. God never answered me like he didn't know that. Somebody shout amen. I said, God, I can't quit. And God kept dealing with me, quit your job and go full time in the ministry. Go full time in the ministry. Go full time in the ministry. I said, God, I can't do that. I'm making good money. This is the first job I've had, Lord, that is making any money. I went from making $75 a week to making my near $700 a week. Now, that's a pretty good 
increase. $600 easy. I say, God, I can't quit this job. It's a good job. It pays good. I love it. I'm enjoying it. God never argue. God will never argue with you. And I said, God, I can't. And one day, the sun was shining. I got laid off, and they they called me back to work. Y'all know the story well. And I walked out of my door, going to call my boss. And God spoke to me in an autumn voice, just like that right there. It's your last chance. God spoke that into my spirit, into my heart. My bones quivered. It's your last chance. Today, you have to make your mind up. And I've got some of y'all squirming, but it's still truth. I said, God, I had, the choice was that day. I can keep my $700, $600 a week. I could have got fired three days later. You never know. I said, God, I'll do it. I called my boss, and I said, Tommy, I can't come back, buddy. I said, I'm sorry. I said, you're depending on me. I said, people are depending on me. God is calling me, and I just can't come back. He said, okay, Keith, fine. Let me tell you one thing. From that day, I never looked back. Now, that don't mean that things wasn't tight. Don't mean that we didn't have to dig out the change out of the, out of the car seats. Sell a few Coke bottles. Most of y'all don't know what that means. Anybody know what selling Coke bottles was? Stack them up and sell them. Woo! Had to wash them out sometimes. <laughs> but God provided selling Coke bottles. Amen. But you know what? We never went hungry one meal. We never lost one thing by the grace of God. Had a house payment of $88.12. God, who in the world can pay that kind of money for a house? $88.12. Somebody shout amen. When I signed that on that note, 88 how are we going to pay $88? But God's good. Somebody shout he made a way. When you follow God, you'll be blessed all of your life. Amen. It may not always be roses. I've cried a many a tear, but I've been blessed of God. Hallelujah. And I've never went back and had to go back and amen. How many when God's, you know what? God's always provided. Can I get a witness in the house? God's always provided. God's always. I was in a tent revival in Whitley City, Kentucky. Amen. The offers were nothing. Amen. A few nights I didn't even take an offering up. Amen. There wasn't enough money in that place to even take an offering up. And I didn't even take offers up. Amen. A few nights. And one night I uh, had a preacher friend come and I give him the offering. And I think he got $60. Amen. Some other people come and he got $60. I hadn't seen $60 like that. I thought, my God, Fort Knox has opened up. And most time, you know, he would pay his tithes off of that. It would be at least $6. And he stuck that off in his pocket, walked out and said, thank you, Brother Wayne. We didn't have money to go. We didn't have, we didn't have money to go home on. And this elderly man came up the last night of that tent revival. Didn't look like he had two nickels rubbed together. He said, Keith, but he called me. He said, here, this will help you get home. Handed me a $100 bill. Well, ain't God good? <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. But you know what? God was good five minutes before that. I don't think y'all heard me. God was good five minutes before that. Amen. When I didn't know if he was going to make it home or not, but God was good. Can I get a witness in the house? Amen. God was good to us, Brother Buddy, when we took the tent down, amen, to get it dry. It was on a Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken, and amen, the sun was shining. And while the sun was shining, it decided it to rain. Just come a good rain on that tent. Water all over the tent. Had to crank the tent up. Try to get it dry off. It wouldn't dry off. We had to crank that tent back down. Water running out of it, wasn't it? That thing was so heavy, you couldn't, amen. If it hadn't been for the two light men there to help us, the light men come to cut the lights off, amen, get our temporary. And they said, we ain't supposed to help, we ain't supposed to do any of that kind of stuff, but we'll help you. If we hadn't had them guys, we'd never got the tent loaded. Anybody hear me? But God's still good. 
Amen. And I went to church that night and preached the message. Whose fire are you warming by? If you don't get the real fire, you're going to warm by somebody else's. And it won't last too long. Amen. Almost does. They get ready to come to the music. Amen. But I want my heart fixed this morning. How many of y'all want your heart fixed? Would you raise your hand and say, God, I want my heart fixed. God, I want a heart that, God, that I don't... I, I, I just don't teeter totter all the time, but God, I, I want I want to have a commitment. How many of y'all married your soulmate? How many of you married somebody that you you gonna spend the rest of your life with? That's only done by commitment. And let me tell you something: because you love somebody, don't mean you'll stay with them. You gotta have a commitment. Marriage don't happen. Love don't happen. You have to work it. And if you, if you call me a liar on that, you can, but I'll guarantee you, if you're not doing it, it won't last. <laughs> Amen. I love this woman that God gave me. <laughs> That's what Adam said. I love my sweetheart. Amen. But you got to work with her. I saved that money for that. Special lure. You don't know what I'm talking about. Save that money for that special lure. I look at that sweet thing. I'll take that money for that lure. I'll go buy her something. Amen. And I get more joy out of that. I'll just rent Brother Calvin's. Somebody shout amen. Thanks a lot. You're going to rent to me. Thanks a lot. I'm going to lay hands on him. <laughs> But God, but God is good. Heaven knows he's a good God. I love him, brother. I love Brother Calvin. But God is a good God. Heaven knows he's a good God. Listen to me as I close tonight or today. Amen. God wants a heart that you'll praise him, Psalms 86 and 12. God wants a heart, amen, that you'll go to him and say, God, I love you. And God, with my heart, I want to make sure, God, that is fixed. God, that's established, God, that if, if everything goes bad, God, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to love you. How many feels that way today? As I said, the Bible talks about 50 types of different hearts in the Bible. The types of heart. Listen to it. I'm going to give it all to you as I close. You can come to the music. There's a stony heart. There's a divided heart. There's a deceitful heart. The Bible says there's a broken heart. The Bible says there's a contrite heart or a repentant heart. There's a heart that can be grieved. There's a willing heart. There's a discouraged heart. There's an obstinate heart, one that says no to God. There's a proud heart. The Bible says there's a wicked heart. There's a heart that, that people fear and tremble. There's a perfect heart. There's a double heart, the Bible says. The Bible says there's a tender heart. A soft heart, a pure heart, an upright heart, a clean heart, a heart that's fixed, a subtle heart, one that's crafty, that, amen, that got devised of evil in their hearts, and yet they patting you on the back saying how great you are, only to hurt you down the road. The Bible calls it there's a forward or a perverse heart. The Bible says there's a wise heart. The Bible says there's a merry heart. The Bible calls it, there's a soft, sorrowful heart, and there's a haughty heart. There's a heart that frets all the time and wearies and upset. There's a heavy heart. And this in here, one, if, if you'll put it up, Daniel, Proverbs 25 and verse 3. Listen to this heart right here. When I seen this one, this one caught my attention, and I put some parentheses with it and things I wanted to see. Proverbs 25 and verse 3. There's a despiteful heart. There's a bitter heart. There's a new heart. There's a stony heart the Bible talks about. There's a heart of flesh. And this heart here is the heavens for height and the earth for depths and the heart of kings is unsearchable. Do you think about that? See, we don't know sometimes what our leaders, they tell us one thing, but we don't know the real motive of their hearts. They're unsearchable. There's an unsearchable heart according to scriptures. 
There's a meek and lowly heart. There's an honest and good heart. There's an overcharged heart that you get overcharged with things of this world and it, and it consumes you. There's a troubled heart. There's a single heart. There's a foolish and darkened heart. There's an impeded heart, one that will not repent. There's a circumcised heart. There's an evil heart. There's a true heart. There's a melted heart. There's a deceitful heart, a hard heart. There's a whorish heart. There's a mischievous heart. There's a diabolical heart, very devilish, very wicked. There's a covenant heart. And I love this one. There's a compassionate heart. How many of y'all want a compassionate heart this morning? Would you raise your hands and say, God, I want that heart. Folks, listen to me. Listen to me just a moment. If the Lord was to come, would you go? Is your heart right with God? Are you just playing along or trying to kid yourself and convince yourself? Is your heart for God this morning? As we close. Do I have a heart that God will find waiting for him when he comes? God, I want that heart. Would you raise your hands all this building one more time and tell him you love him and ask him to visit your heart. Ask him to touch your heart this morning. If you're lost in this building, ask God to, to save you. Have that repentant heart this morning. Say, God, I need to be saved this morning. Come on, talk to him a minute. God made me a clean heart this morning. I want a heart that's fixed. Come on, talk to him. Folks, you're going to leave this world one of these days. You're going to leave this world before night. Is your heart right with God? Is it really committed to him? Do you still love too many things of this world? This altar is open. Would you pray this morning? Come on, would you love him this morning? Make a way for you. God's talking to somebody in this building. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to recommit to God this morning. He is there by your side. We've set our mouths over before us in Regina now to recommit. Come on, let God touch you this morning. somebody's heart. Somebody's got a very bad broken heart, but God is soothing it this morning. Don't mean you're out of trouble, but it means that God's touching your heart this morning. Come on, reach out to him and let him touch you. Come on, sing it. He's making a way He'll for you. Make a way Come on. Hallelujah. In the middle of the way. Come on, touch him right now. We touch him on the power of God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. He is there by your side. Pray for your sister this morning. Ask God, God visit my heart. God visit my spirit.
all understood this morning. I was preaching that. Or how many of you even meditated in your own heart or in your own mind this morning? God, I want my heart right. I want my heart fixed like this. Amen. I do. Amen. It's just a challenge to move up closer. Great people. Amen. Just moving up a little bit can make all the difference in the world. How many believe that? How many of us we can all come more committed this morning? Amen. We really can. Amen. Amen. Talk to God. Amen. Amen. Make that commitment. No turning back. Amen. right now for Sister Sheila. Reach your hands this way. God, for those shingles. God, I ask you to touch Sister Sheila, Lord. God, I ask you to minister to her body by the power of God. Father, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, minister to her this morning. God, let them things dry up. God, I've seen them dry up before, God. Just a prayer, God, that the burning and the itching and the stinging, God, it'll all just dry up by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, through her blood system, through her nervous system, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, I ask you to touch my daddy's back, Lord. All of those stripes, you said he was healed. God, that arthritis and every knee that's in that back this morning. God, let the morning of the Holy Ghost, the fire of your presence, just touch him in the name of Jesus. Minister to him in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let's give God a shout of praise. a shout of praise this morning. It's been requested that me and Daddy sing Lighthouse. So I want us to sing Lighthouse this morning. Uh, if Jeannie will come in here and help me. Okay, we're going to sing Lighthouse. I don't praise the Lord <clears throat> being here again today feeling the presence of God and the Holy Spirit. I know God is real because God has touched my body many times when I was down and out. I couldn't even get up out of the bed. Couldn't even get a foot out. I, I couldn't even get one foot out of the bed. They had to pull me out, stand me up, and drag me almost to the table. But you know, God is able. God is able to take control. I said, Lord, I, I, I've just got to have something to, I've got to have a test to get before I can sort of pray, help pray. I couldn't even put my hand down to the bed to, to help push myself up. And my poor little wife, I felt this body for her. A lot of times she pulls to my, I know she would just give out, but she never give up. She said, no. No, you're going to get up. And I thank God that God come on the scene and, and touched my body. And I'm able to walk. I can't walk like, like a lot of y'all, but I can walk a little. And God said, just keep on walking. Keep on walking. Amen. Jesus is a, Jesus is a healer. Amen. And, and he heals and he touches when it's got him time. When you get right with God, get, when you get your heart just right where God can take a hold, he will do something for you. There's a lighthouse on the hillside. It looks I see when I'm lost in sin.
everybody Big ships don't sail this way anymore. They all go around. But my mind goes back to that stormy night when just in time I saw the light, the light from that old lighthouse that stands upon the hill.